Hey everyone, welcome to Arizona Drone. I'm Rich Charpentier, and as promised, I'm starting up a new series on some of my favorite um, flight apps, my autonomous flight apps. So we're going to start out today, uh, this is going to be part one of two parts, and we're going to be taking a look at Map Pilot from Maps Made Easy. So for doing 3D modeling, um, this has become one of my all-time favorites, especially with some recent updates that uh, Map Pilot has added. So let's jump right into it. So today we're going to walk through the Map Pilot interface, and we're going to plan a small flight plan. So it's not going to be a big one, but I've done some very sizable ones recently with Map Pilot. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on Map Pilot here. Now, what do we have up on the screen? We've got to create a new mission. We've got saved missions. We've got our log file manager, and we've got settings. Under saved missions, I'm going to show you that I've been doing a lot of saved missions with Map Pilot. So some small areas and some large areas. If you look down at the bottom, uh, 77.56 acres for a big overview of the Pointer Rocks RV campground and the surrounding area of the Granite Dells. Now, these are some pretty crazy rock formations, so doing, um, doing models in these is very interesting. I'm going to go ahead and hit Done, and what we're going to do is we're going to go in and create a new mission. So I just tap that, and so previous progress was on a different cached map, so that was one of my last flights, um, and I'm going to say OK, because we're not going to be doing that flight. Then uh, Map Pilot gives you a warning, just letting you know that automated flight has an increased risk. And here we go. So this is close to where I am right now. And so here's the map pilot interface. We've got our dot where we are. On the left hand side, we've got a couple options that we're going to take a look at momentarily. And up on the top bar, we've got multiple options as well. So I would like to plan a flight over the rock formations right in this area. So it's gotten busy here at Point of Rocks. So there's a lot of traffic in the camping area. So we're going to confine this flight to where it's not going over any RVs or any campers. We want to keep that away from the folks. And since we're just doing a demo for here, that's going to be a okie dokie. So first off, what I'm going to do is I already know where I'm launching from. So I'm going to be launching. I'm going to just take my finger and I'm going to double tap on my launching point. So there's where my launching point is. So that's the purple dot that you're seeing right there. And now what I can do is I can just take my finger and tap and hold, and you will see a yellow dot over here. And actually, I'm going to drag that yellow dot a little further over. I'm going to put it close to the road, but not in the road. And then I'm going to tap and hold again for another area and tap and hold again. And so I think you're getting the idea. We're going to do a tap and hold to define my flight area. And actually, we're going to have a little fun with this. We're going to keep it away from the campers, like I said. But we'll get some areas that are rocky and have some really interesting definition when we do the 3D model that we're going to be doing. So I'm tapping and holding out here again. And I'm just going to tap right out here. So keeping away from houses and campers alike. So there we go. All right, so here is my defined map area. And as you can see, um, it goes back and forth. So this is not a crosshatch mission, but we are going to change that momentarily. So to get the best results, I find that um, doing crosshatched missions are the best. So. One of the other applications out there, the Pix4D Capture, does this as well. But um, I like the way I can define the flight areas better um, with Map Pilot. And we'll see the comparison when we take a look at Pix4D Capture down the road. So right now, we have um, this back and forth action, basically north to south, south to north, north to south, south to north. Um, on the top bar, I'm going to give that bar a tap. So now we've got some additional options. So we've got Terrain Aware, Active Connect. There we go. We've got Normal Mission, Norm Mission. If I tap that, it's now offering me a grid mission. So it's going to take longer to fly this pattern, but we're going to get a heck of a lot of detail here. 
So I'm going to stick with the grid mission. And also, for the purposes of this, um, of this tutorial, I'm going to do uh, an 80% and 80%. So we're going to get terrain, structures, trees. Um, this is going to be pretty detailed. If we push this overlap to 90%, um, we, would, we would be seeing some really heavy-duty detail. I'm going to avoid that for now because uh, the more detail that we do, the longer our flight is going to be, and it could run into multiple batteries. Now, one of the really nice things, whoops, i got to tap that back down again and just tap that 8080, and now I'll swipe that up. So for the moment, we've got this cross-hatched area, which we're going to be flying, and let's find out a little information about that area. On the left-hand side, the top button with the pencil in it, is going to tell us about our flight. So we are flying 5.4 acres. Um, the flight distance is going to be 2.73 miles. My max speed, 10.4 miles per hour. That might get adjusted by the program depending on the lighting conditions when we do this flight. So Map Pilot will suggest and adjust your flight speed um, to get the most detail. Now you see here that it's saying the duration of the flight is going to be 17 minutes 42 seconds and it's suggesting that that might take two batteries. It's going to be 281 images with 674 points. So it's going to take 1.4 gigs of space. Now I'm going to swipe this one back to the left and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to skip the trash can and I'm going to go to this little, uh, let's take a look at that, a little magnifying glass with some blocks in it. Right now, this flight is set to be 179 feet above ground level. So above my takeoff point is what that means. We are going to bump this up. So I find somewhere around 250 feet to 300 feet, I get some of my best results. Now, the higher we go, the more area that we're covering when we're shooting down. So I'm going to swipe that back and let's go look at the top again. Remember, earlier I said that this flight was going to take 17 minutes. Now that we've increased the elevation, um, we're capturing more area for each shot because we're higher up, and now it has reduced the time to 11 minutes and 21 seconds with only one battery being used and 181 images, so we've cut down the number of images as well. I'm going to swipe this back. And for the final flight plan here, I'm going to get us around 275 feet. So actually, 272 is fine. I'm going to swipe back again, and we're going to take a look at this one more time. So now um, our distance is 2.14 miles of flight. Our duration is going to be 10 minutes, 16 seconds. So we've cut the flight time way down. Uh, we are going to be using a single battery. Now. When Map Pilot offers you a multiple battery mission, that's okay. Because what's really awesome with Map Pilot is when you fly the mission, when it gets to a certain threshold, um, the drone will actually automatically return to your launching point and it will land. You can swap your battery out, pop the new battery in, and resume the mission with Map Pilot. So it is very, very straightforward, and it's been very accurate. One of the things that amazes me the most when I've done multiple battery missions is the accuracy of the drone returning to its launch point. It's absolutely incredible, and it lands perfectly on my little helipad. So it blows my mind. All right, we're going to slide this back in. This is going to be the mission that we will be flying, hopefully tomorrow, provided that... Um, Wind speeds are okay here because we've had some really heavily gusting winds recently uh, in the Granite Dells. So what do we want to do next? Well, I am going to go to the bottom icon on the left-hand side, the little map icon there. And the leftmost button is a save button. So now it is downloading the offline base map so that if I did not have network connection when I went to the site that I was working on, um, I would still have uh, the ground information here, so the map behind it. So that's another great feature of Map Pilot is the fact that I'm downloading these offline base maps and that I can reuse them again and again. So we've got this saved version now, and 
once again, I'm just going to pop back up here. We have a couple other options, so let's talk about them real quick. Terrain aware. When I fly this mission, it's going to ask me if I want to do terrain aware. Uh, what that means is that the drone would actually adjust elevation uh, based on the ground height. So it'll go up and down. That really doesn't work well for a 3D model. It actually messes things up because you're 200 feet above the high point and then you're 200 feet above the low point. You've got this sloping stuff going on. So it really doesn't work well. So I avoid terrain aware when I'm flying to uh, make a 3D model. So I stay, I just stay away from that one. Um, the camera control is off right now because I don't have the camera hooked up. I don't have the drone hooked up to this yet. Uh, so we will see that when we do our flight. I won't be changing anything. I will be going with Map Pilot's defaults and their suggestions because they work very well for me. The other things you might notice on here, so I've got my max uh, speed, which I could change. I could tap on that. And I also have a max time, so that's the amount of time that I want to fly before I want the drone returning. So 18.6 minutes of flight time, and the drone will return to get its battery swap. I'm going to be flying with a Mavic Pro, so 18.6 minutes is fine. Um, if I was doing a really large area, 18.6 um, is probably what I'm going to be after. With a small area like this, I could change the max time because it's not going to be a long trip for the drone to come back to me. The whole idea of that max time is if you're flying a huge mission and you're doing acres and acres and acres and the drone is pretty far away from you, um, you want to make sure you've got enough battery for the return flight. So you can adjust your max time here, but you've got to keep that in mind. So I would be conservative uh, with these numbers. That way we're not losing a drone on the way back because uh, nobody wants that to happen. All right, so I'm going to slide this back up to the top again. And we also see the other readouts. So right now my iPad that I'm putting this on is at 68% battery. Uh, when we hook up the drone, we'll actually get uh, the drone's battery. And next to that, uh, showing our signal connection to the drone. We have no connection to the drone right now. Finally, that zero with the satellites, because we have zero satellites at the moment. So we are good to go for the flight. What I can do next up on the upper bar, you see the little arrow to the left. So I'm going to hit that and say go back. And let's take a look at our saved missions. So the bottom mission, so today happens to be May 31st. And so the bottom mission here is what we just created. Now, if you hold and tap on this, Let's see here. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. And this is not working with me here. Normally when I hold and tap on that, there I go, edit. So it's a swipe to the side now. It used to just be a tap, pretty slick. So if I go in here to edit, I can actually change the name. So I'm gonna keep the initial information and I'm going to do AZ drone demo. And I'm going to say OK to that. So now you will see that my latest mission at the bottom is uh, labeled AZ Drone Demo. It's 5.4 acres, one battery, and it's showing me my Latin long for my starting point. So when we are ready to fly this, we'll be good to go. Also, under your settings here, let's just take a quick look. So you can actually tell it what type of drone you're flying, um, your default units, if you want metric or if you want imperial. Uh, a movable home point. Um, once you've set your home point, if you know that you're flying from that home point, I wouldn't move it. So here we go. Speed class rating. So how often we're going every 2.5 seconds, we're going to do an image. Um, point down to aid landing. Like I said before, it's pretty amazing how accurate the uh, drone's landing pattern is. Um, we can also show our nearby cached missions. So if we're making multiple missions, and we're going to be out covering those missions during a day. We can show them on our map. So I've got that turned off because I got a bunch of missions and the map looks kind of messy. So we can slow the aircraft according to light conditions. This is what I was mentioning before. So once you've got the drone up in the air, if the drone feels that it's a little darker, it might slow down its speed to make sure that it gets accurate images which is awesome. So our map box share, 
and I actually do have an access token for Maps Made Easy. So um, I will black that out. So there we go. I also have my Air Data user token for recording my flights back to Air Data, which is super convenient. So all right, there we go. All right, everybody, we also have the auto clear image points, and that is the current build of Map Pilot. So on part two of this tutorial, we'll actually go outside into the wilderness, launch a drone, and fly our mission, and then come back and process the mission with a, a 3D modeling software that I've got on my Macintosh. And so all of these, uh, all of the data points that you get are usable with Pix4D, um, with drone deploy, uh, and with photo scan as well. So we'll actually be using photo scan tomorrow. All right, everyone, so that's a wrap here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click this, and there we go, we've minimized it. And so I hope that this was uh, informative for you. Please feel free to leave comments if you'd like more in-depth reviews or if I've gone too slow. Um, drop a note in the comments. We're looking to improve this channel and engage more people and share what we know about drone flight from here at AZ Drone. Thanks for stopping by, and as always, fly safe and have fun.